Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Auzubillahiminashaitanirajeem. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ati Allah, Ati Rasulu Ulul Amri minkum. And a reminder to myself and abdukul ajeezu, da'eefu, miskeenu, zalim, jahad. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Wa bi madadakum wa nazarakum Sayyidi Rasulul Kareem, Ya Khabib al Azim. Madad Sayyidi Ya Sultani Nauliya Man Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, Sultani Nauliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani. Mawlana Shaykh Sham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Mawlana Khaliq al Khushtawani. Sahib Zaman Sayyid Muhammad al Mahdi alayhi salam, Furukullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyidullah Sayyidina alayhi salam. Thumma Sayyid Baka Sadiq, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al Hussain alayhi salam, Sayyidina Fatima Tazan alayhi salam, Sayyidina Sayyidina Sadatina, Sayyidina al Fatiha. Shafat ya Rasulul Kareem. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. InshaAllah the blessings of the holy month of Safar and within the last 10 days of Safar that opening the lights inshaAllah Allah give us a life in which to see Rabbil Awwal and the blessed month of the birth of Sayyidina Imam Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mustafa wasallam. and that Allah dress us and Bless us with those lights. Ameen. Ameen. And the last Wednesday, this coming Wednesday will be the last Wednesday of uh, Safar. And Safar is a, described as a he heavy month because Allah's dressing is a dress of haybah and majestic lights. These majestic lights they cause everything crooked to become straightened. Means anything of Allah's majestic jalali dress, it corrects and burns every type of difficulty. So, in a month in which Allah's majestic dress, dress is dressing creation, then imagine creation whom they feel themselves with bad character and all sorts of negative energies around themselves. This majestic dress, the truth and false, they don't come together, they don't peacefully coexist. The truth of the heavens when it comes with such a light and with such an energy, it begin to burn every falsehood. And hence this understanding of what people consider to be difficulty. Because we feel ourselves with negative energies and negative surroundings. When Allah's majestic lights come, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Means Allah's will is coming in the majestic and jalali dress of Divinely lights that begins to cause every type of difficulty for insan and the burning of all shayateen. As a result the shayateen become very angry, very hyperactive and all sorts of difficulties upon the earth. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us mm -hmm. and protect us with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad from these negativities within ourselves and the ricochet of other people's negativities that may be indirectly coming to affect us. Can I be heard? Yes. Okay, because I'm not hearing any feedback or I don't know if anyone's even there. No, At the end maybe Lloyd will say, oh it wasn't even connected. No, Marshall, here you can. Okay, okay. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. How is everyone? Everyone's good? Alhamdulillah. We're missing you. We're missing you. Thank you Shaykh, we miss everybody there. Allah bless you, your families and everyone. Yeah. Everyone online, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This, this way of tafakkur and is, is oversimplified in Western understanding. People say that just love is the way and love. Then people of dogma and rules, they say, no, no, it's the actions and we don't know any such word as love. And tariqah, the real Sufism 
the real path of tazkiyah and cleaning and cleansing, it comes and teaches an immense science. This science of knowing yourself before you can know your Lord and you'll know the Lord that governs you before you know the Lord Most High. Because we said His kingdom is coming but doesn't mean that it came to everyone, that the kingdom of Satan is within the hearts of people. 99.9% of humanity has given themselves to the kingdom of shaitan. For Allah's kingdom to come there's going to be an immense battle for that reality to dress and sun. Meditation and tafakkur is the highest levels of tariqah but they give a permission to teach it nowadays because of the immense state of difficulty that we're in. If people don't begin to understand themselves and correct themselves, all that they're building in their life is a house upon a cliff. So imagine children building homes and nobody gives them any guideline and no understanding and you go and visit and the house is on a cliff putting a couple of sticks and say, this is what I'm building. Allah's rahmah and mercy comes and dispenses people from the heavens and heavenly training and those whom have been trained under these heaven, heavenly servants of Allah that it looks like what you're building is going to fall within an instant. Come to correct yourself by observing yourself. So it's a psychology course for the self. So why people should study psychology in school but not to become a psychiatrist or a psychologist to deal with crazy people but to deal with your own crazy self. That the minute you think you're cured and we, not you as in you the audience, me myself, that a part of this path and the realization of this path was my own insanity. That my, my insane behavior, my incorrect behavior, Allah enrolled me in a school of psychology to get to understand the psyche. And it's not understand the psyche of other people because when you take these courses and you take these understandings and you read a little bit about psychology, it's actually learning about yourself. And this is what Prophet described, who knows himself will know his Lord. Rabb in Arabic is a governing body, that which governs you. It's not only the Creator, the Creator Most High governs everything but that's oversimplified. What awliyaullah come to inspire in our lives is you have to understand what is governing you, what is your, your underlying characteristic, what is it that makes you and if it's not of a Divinely nature you will not survive what's coming. I don't know if anybody's noticed but there has been an immense opening of negative energies, immensely negative. That the, the energies everywhere are so immensely negative that by Allah's grace and mercy is the only way to survive these difficulties and, and these, these hardships that begin to open upon humanity. And one, one understanding because some people were saying that the way is love and, and, and you don't need to meditate, you don't need to do anything just to love. You, you don't have any love and you don't have any prayers, you don't have anything if it's not understanding the good character. Because somebody who thinks they are loving and if they don't have good character they're not actually loving. And if they think that they, they're, they're praying good and, and Allah is so happy with their amal, their actions, their worshipness and if they continuously in bad character Allah then describes that's not something that's going to be accepted in Divinely Presence. And there's many hadiths on that, that they come to Allah so boastful of how they prayed so well and Allah dragged them away. They came and how they gave so much and how much they did for Allah and Allah dragged them away. And tariqah comes to teach that before that type of 
appearance before our Lord, we take a hisab, take an accounting of ourselves. So very simple understanding for med- meditation, tafakkur and self-realization. Everybody has a little candle within themselves. I, I talked about pilot light but somebody didn't understand what a pilot light was, they thought it was a pilot. But it's a candle. So imagine this a little candle inside you, Allah gives a little candle. This little fire is the source of every bad characteristic that we have. So because we have to visualize exactly how we are so that where we're going is inside. The, the concept of meditation is, is not sitting by a tree. That to reach a state of peace you must have had jihadul akbar. And that's the immensity of what Prophet was teaching. He was teaching companions who were fighting on a daily basis, maybe two battles a day and people dying, companions dying, people being slaughtered. After all these battles Sayyidina Muhammad described that when I leave this earth and my passing from this earth, the greatest battles for you will begin. And the Sahabi were shocked that how when we're fighting all the time and we think this is like immensely difficult that there's going to be a time where the, the real jihad will come, the real struggle will come. It says, yes it's the struggle against ourselves. At that time there's no reward, there's no, there's no treasures to be uh, taken. The, the only reward is the beating of ourselves and, and the uh, effacing of ourself and coming against our, our, our bad characteristics. So then it must be immensely difficult, immensely difficult. And meditation and Islamic and spiritual understandings of tafakkur and contemplation and taskiya is this battle. Because we said before, how, how you can make tawuf if you don't know what your, what your life is about? So when Allah is describing the Kaaba that my house has to be washed. And once you begin to wash my house then you can begin to circumambulate my house. Once you circumambulate my house then begin your prostration and your prayers. And we said this was a sign from Allah about meditation. When people say, where's meditation? Where's all these things in Qur'an? It's right here. But they don't read the same Qur'an, they don't have the understanding of, of what Qur'an is trying to teach them. Why Allah talking about to wash the Kaaba? He's not asking for everybody to be Kaaba washers. Everybody try to go get a job there to volunteer to wash the Kaaba. But the, one day we would understand from holy hadith and all the understanding that this way of Allah is like a treasure, you have to seek it. Any child who plays a video game knows that, this life is just a big video game and we're the avatars inside of it. When Allah allowed video game technology to come out, it was a big understanding of ourselves. Our life is a video game, are you getting it? Are you trying to get the rewards of every level, get all of… The secrets of what Allah has put upon every station and every level. You want so eagerly to go to the next level but you didn't take any of the treasures at the level that you're on and you didn't accomplish what you needed to be accomplished so that you would survive the next level. If you play a video game you know that if you, if you don't get all the, the right treasures on that level, the monster that comes out on the second level he's going to obliterate you. And then you go have to go back and go through all the doors and all the treasures and pick up everything. Allah is reminding for us, you're in a video game. When you read Holy Qur'an did you understand that the Kaaba was your heart? When Holy Hadith would have taught you because Allah was, wants to know. If you love Prophet and you read with, with earnest and with sincerity these hadiths about yourself, about self-understanding, self-realization, Prophet described, Allah's not in heaven and He's not on earth. Where's Allah? In the heart of His believer. Another hadith that the, the heart of the believer is the house of Allah Zuqal bil mu'min baytullah. The house of the, the, the heart of a mu'min is a house of Allah So then my my heart should be a Kaaba. 
my life should be to clean it. That's my meditation. Every day to look into my Kaaba and, and there's idols in my Kaaba. Allah won't come where my idols are. And what are idols? That which distract you from the worshipness of Allah that which holds you and binds you to something other than Allah that which controls you other than Allah and it breaks your taslim and your submission. That's what an idol is. It's not that you only put a statue of Buddha and you try to worship it, but anything that takes you from the submission of your character to submit to Allah has become an idol within your heart. Anything that controls you and blocks you from submission, from good character, it becomes an idol within the self. And that's why the tafakkur and contemplation is my heart has to be a Kaaba, my life will be how to look at it continuously. Then they begin to teach that if you're going to look into your heart, there's a little candle inside that heart. Allah has placed that in there. And Allah made a shaitan to be attached into our life, that's the role of shaitan in this life. Is that shaitan knows there's a candle inside this person's being, means there's a little fire, just a little one. And his whole life is how to ignite this fire with bad character. So when people have the bad characters and, and the ruinous traits, it's the fire that shaitan throws on it like a gasoline that makes the person to explode. If they're not able to control the issues in their life and, and their mouth and their tongue, their, their reaction and, and action to everything and they become reactive to everything, shaitan has that person under control. That has now become an idol for them and has blocked them from the worshipness to Allah so that's what an idol is. It's not that you only put a statue in your home and say, oh I don't have any statues in my home, I'm not an idol worshipper. But you are an idol worshipper if shaitan is the one whom is controlling you because his control is stopping us from taslim to Allah So all he has to do is ignite certain issues and it's like you poured gas on people. That something comes and triggers a gas, hits the flame and the person ignites with anger and in that rage and anger they are completely overtaken. They don't hear anything anymore, they're not seeing what you're trying to do like hold on, slow down, slow down. And this is the state in which was the next stage of this virus. What was the purpose of, of this virus coming on to earth? This is a satanic attack with the permission of Allah because these are the last days. These are the last days and this is the truth and the promise of Sayyidina Muhammad that the king of Dajjals would be arriving, that shaitans would be occupying everywhere and they would be killing and destroying humanity. And Allah proof that the words of Sayyidina Muhammad are true. And this is the stage. This sickness and this shayateen and this attack that is everywhere are devils igniting everyone. Means if they send the poison, send the virus within insan, send these energies upon people, not only they get sick and those whom die from the sickness, they die from the sickness. Those whom don't die from the sickness, they are ignited with all sorts of rage. And that's what we told and anyone go back to the videos that after the sickness there would be rage. And it was not but a week when they let everybody out and they're protesting and burning every city. And they think that their cause is just and that's how shaitan fools you. Oh no your cause is just, this is not rage you have, this is an issue you have and you have every right to express your issue. I said, no this, you don't have any right to express any issue. It's not a viable issue in Allah's eyes at all. What this is, is a satanic attack. And satanic attack comes with all these devils and ignite people. And if they don't ignite them, they give them to rub and to wash in alcohol. People are practically making wudu in alcohol now. They put it all day long on their hand, then they now put it on their face, then they put it on their hand. 
And there was a news article that came out that a lady ignited thir- three degree, third degree burns on her whole body from this rubbing alcohol. First he asked how she got this alcohol on her whole body because every day they wipe here, then they wipe a little bit here, clean a little bit here. And that's all shaitan wounds is that no longer wash with water, that have me inside of you, have me outside of you and to wash me all over you. So that you're completely like a fire, you ignite like a flame and the lady burned even from the outside third degree. So we don't understand that we're under a satanic attack and that all these devils are coming and people think that meditation is for relaxation and entertainment purposes. It has absolutely nothing to do with that. It's actually not relaxing at all. It's very aggressive, it's very combative because everything about myself is not to submit, not to listen, not to to take any type of guidance but to be left by myself with my devils. Just leave me alone and let my devils do whatever they want to do. So no, this Jihad al-Akbar is tafakkur. How to contemplate, how to, to wash, how to make your zikr, how to control any type of emotion. When you feel that something is coming you can feel you're being sparked, go wash. Walk away from the situation and go and wash. And don't like shaitan to ignite your entire being as if he burned your Kaaba. Everything that you had beautified within yourself, put all your zikrs, put all your… Imagine that you put all these beautiful things for Allah in your heart. The moment you become angered, shaitan burned it all as if now you are in a completely blank state and you must rebuild everything right back from scratch. And that's all he wants is that to look that there's no rewards, there's no nothing there, it's just been continuously burning down. So it's not an end stage, it's not a, a beginning path, it's not something for entertainment. It is a survival mechanism for what's coming. When we understand and we're going to meditate, we're going to contemplate, we're going to breathe, we're going to learn how to make the madad and the connection with the shaykhs, asking for support, that when these negativities are coming around, ask for the support, train in the support, make your salawats, understand how water is essential for us. If there's too much negativity you have to have water with a little bit of tea tree oil, all of these trainings to push away any type of negative energy, burn asfan and different fragrances that burn away and push away negative energies. All of this become the tools and the armory for the believer in which to arm themselves against an unseen force that is coming onto this earth in, in a big opening, in a big opening. We pray that Allah to dress us and to bless us. Mm-hmm. Those whom can support, your support creates a lifeline to the shaykh. When you support you're locked on to them. If you're not supporting uh, you're probably clicking around to 20 different people. Then you gotta figure out who's got your back. If you're bouncing around to 20 different shaykhs and you're just clicking, clicking, clicking you're just in it for the entertainment. But when you build a lifeline with the shaykh and find the one that you like and that the teaching resonates with you, you begin to support. That support not only cleanses insan because of how you make your rizq and your sustenance and all the contaminants within those that sustenance, as soon as you give it as support the shaykhs make it like gold, they make circles of zikr, they give out support, they do whatever Prophet is ordering for them to do. That rizq becomes like a gold that blesses you and your family eternally. But most important it makes a connection with the shaykh like a lock that you're communicating, you're in it, you're, you're being supported by it, you have a belief with it. Now that relationship begins to open and that person begins to feel the essence of being a student and someone on that path and not just drifting alone in space or unknown where they're going. It's a sense of of belonging and community that I I belong to them, I'm with them, I'm I'm, uh, supporting with them and that's what's essential in this path and especially in these days 
that support and then support with your abilities, with your, your skills, whatever things that you can contribute of technology, everything now is based on technology. If you're somebody who's sitting and knows how to make apps and knows how to do digital marketing and you're saying absolutely nothing while you see us struggling on how to do all of this and market and put it out, just think to yourself, you could have been doing this for Prophet Don't you want the nazar of Prophet Don't you want to have beautific dreams in which Prophet tells you that he's happy with you and feel a sense of love and support? So then that's, that's our whole life. This is now a call to action. This is a call for rising that something is coming upon this earth of difficulty and run to the cave of Sayyidina Muhammad If it's not us, no problem, find someone in your heart that resonates with you and take that path and the teaching. If these teachings are of interest to you and to connect and to, to make your meditation then you have to go here but you can't take our teaching and all these questions and then go to another shaykh and say, oh tell me about muraqabah. Well if he wasn't teaching about it, that's not his specialty. Allah has uh, like a medical school. If you have orthopedic surgeon, you go to orthopedic surgeon. You don't go to cardiologist asking him about orthopedic surgery. So it means you go to the specific and the specialist in which Allah has guided you. If you are a person of spirituality, a person who wants to contemplate, person who wants a higher understanding, then you seek out those who teach of a spiritual nature and spiritual reality and how to connect to that reality. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us, protect us and prepare for us. And the way that we prepare is to support the Milad the Nabi They're blocking us from the open celebrations in, in public and said that we could be responsible for any type of public gathering and any potential outbreak. So no problem, this year we're going to be donating on three continent in uh, on two continents, on the US and in Canada and in Pakistan of giving away food for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and to those who are in need to eat. And that Prophet be happy with us that for the name of Sayyidina Muhammad the immense barakah and blessings of the mawlid and the celebration of the holy birth of Prophet to feed those in need. So we, we urgently ask people to support and to join us, join us in these causes so that our families to be safe. There are children in, in orphanages that their orphanages are run down and destroyed and we can spend 20, 30,000 dollars remodeling a house and people think it's nothing. And just a few thousand dollars we could paint their entire environment to make it look beautiful and beautiful for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam. InshaAllah Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala dress us and bless us, give us ability to to be of support and to be of help inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.